Hey guys, thanks for hopping on. Tonight is our first team call of April, and I have a very exciting guest tonight. Why is it so exciting? Because Katrina has been one of my coaches for two years, two and a half years, one and a half years. One and a half. One and a half years. She's one of my Emerald coaches working her way to Diamond. She took a little bit of a break when she was pregnant with Lily which is the cutest little chubbers ever. Um, and she came back and she's just been kicking ass and rocking it. She quit her job. She didn't go back to work and she does beach body coaching full time. This is her very first team call you guys. And when I told, so I'm going to tell you a little bit, she didn't even volunteer to sign up. Well, she told me she's like, at first she said, I want to host a team call. I just don't know what yet. And then she kind of, you know, we kind of, she kind of did a little backing out. And then one time on a leader zoom, I did a screen share and I actually signed her up and I was like, you're hosting because what she has to talk about tonight is something so many people struggle with. And even if you don't struggle with this, it's something very good to, to learn and to know because you're going to get coaches that are going to struggle with this, or you're going to have you know, friends that are going through this or success partner, but what, whatever it is, this is a great opportunity for you guys to tune in, get some notes, hear from another amazing leader. Um, she is a spitfire. She, she thinks she's an introvert, I think, but she's like, she's crazy. She's fun. And I love her to death. Um, mm -hmm. Katrina, I'm going to let you take it away. If you guys have any questions, please chat in the chat box and we will answer them. Um, do you want to do as you go or do you want to do at the end? Uh, I can just do it at the end. Okay. That's we'll fine. do it at the end. Yeah. So with that, take it away. All right. Sorry. I have like so many notes. It's ridiculous. So if I'm like looking down, you're fine. My bad. <laughs> okay. So if you like most of you guys probably don't know a lot about me, but I have, um, like anxiety to the max. I have, I suffer from agoraphobia and I don't know if you guys know, but it's like a severe anxiety and panic disorder. So like even the thought of me doing this makes me want to vomit, like literally holding it down right now. Anyways. So uh, a little bit about my backstory and why I kind of wanted to talk about the t this topic of unsupportive spouses is because it kind of is why I got to where I am or why I needed beach body essentially. So I'm I have my anxiety disorder and I'm also a former addict and I've been clean and sober for 12 years now. So whoop whoop for that. <laughs> um but a few years ago I so it was probably 2011 um, I was in a really emotionally and abusive relationship with someone who was also a heroin addict. Um, and through like the five years that I was with him, I gained almost 100 pounds just from depression and, you know, everything that can come from having so much anxiety about you know, if you've never had an addict in your life, it's kind of hard to describe, but um, essentially five years later, I broke free from that and I wanted to learn how to love myself again. Um, so I, <laughs> I met Jeremy and he uh, made me feel like I was worth, you know, wanting to work on me and having goals and stuff like that. So the, a little bit about him, though, he was also an addict. He was an alcoholic. Um, so he was using for probably 20 years. Uh, and it wasn't until I got pregnant that he wanted to uh, change himself, you know, for the better, become more healthy and stuff like that. So I didn't always have, you know, through uh, my last two relationships, you know, support. In, in a lot of ways. Um, so anyways, um, I wanted to kind of touch base on why your spouses might not be supportive. Um, so number one, people hate change. 
they literally can't stand it. People like to be complacent. They like to live in their safe zone because why would you want to escape that? It's terrifying, you know, fear. Um, they might feel threatened or insecure by you wanting to um, do better, do more, become healthy, be successful. Um, they also might just have a fear of failure, which is also, you know, one of the biggest fears of your customers. You know, your spouses, um, they might be overweight themselves, they might be unhealthy, and they might not believe in themselves that they can commit to so much like you are. So they, they fear that they might be not as successful with it as you. Um, another big one is they might fear that your relationship with them will change when you change. So like how, what was it, Missy talked a couple weeks ago about raising your vibrations. Um, well, with that, your spouse doesn't always raise their vibrations too. So you guys are on two different wavelengths. Um, they might feel like, I don't know, maybe you don't, they don't, you, what am I trying to say? Uh, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, like you don't want them anymore. Like once you've, like they have this notion, like you're just going to be like this hottie with a naughty body and you're not going to want them anymore for some reason. I don't know. Anyway. Um, Harry's going to have a naughty body. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about though. Like they just feel really insecure. Like, you know, it's not just for like tons of women feel insecure, but it's just as much something for a man, you know, than it is for a woman. So, and one thing, um, so with Jeremy, he actually prefers women who are bigger. There are a lot of men out there who prefer that. They don't like skinny women. So they might think, you know, if you change, they won't like you anymore or vice versa, that sort of thing. Um, let's see. Oh, so I made a little note uh, that says most people are together because they are emotionally evenly matched when they start out their relationship. So same thing with your vibrations, you raise them, you know, what causes, you know, breakups and that sort of thing is, you know, when one person grows, the other person doesn't find the same value in your growth that you do. So you guys are not really on the same level anymore. Um, so I wrote down um, six tips for managing stuff that you guys might be going through. Um, not only for like, you know, your journey to health or weight loss, but also for your business. Cause we all know that it's not just unsupportive spouses that you have a hard time when it comes to losing weight or being healthy. It's also working your business that can be even harder you know, sometimes. So, but I'll touch on the health ones first. So number one, uh, talk to them about your goals. Um, you know, we talk about what our why is, you know, amongst ourselves all the time, but we kind of forget that we don't really talk to them about it. And they probably really don't know why we're doing, you know, what we're doing. Um, Remind them what you're doing is to feel good about yourself. You want to build confidence. Um, you might even want to go in depth about the workout program that you're doing, why you're doing it, what it targets, why you're, why you're working towards that. Explain to them your meal plan, why you want it. Um, and maybe inspire them to join you. I know there's a lot of husbands and wives that will do a workout program alongside their spouses. It shows support on their end and, you know, obviously it 
it's good for your health. <laughs> um, let's see. So number two, ask them for support. So even if they're not joining you, just ask for it anyway. I know that like key to any relationship is communication. And I think we kind of lose that along the way while we're kind of doing our own thing. We're running our own rat race of, you know, um, trying to make sure our meals are right. And we've worked out today and then we kind of forget to, you know, ask for help sometimes. Um, so a couple tips under the support would be to have them um, help you find recipes um, and also have them hide the scale from you. <laughs> I have a couple challengers who I've just told, just, just have your husband hide it from you. And they literally do. And they say it's the best thing that ever happened to them because they don't know where it is. They can't dwell on it and they shouldn't need to anyway. Um, and I don't know, is Jesse on right now? Vicki, do, doesn't Matt, Matt hides the snacks from Jesse, doesn't he? Yeah. So he'll take the candy and whatever snacks that she loves and he'll just hide them from her. Um, and then if you're, I know a lot of women uh, aren't comfortable when people point out, or like I would say when men point out when they're not eating what they're supposed to be eating. Um, so maybe this tip might not be for you, but uh, maybe ask them to keep you honest. If you, if they notice that you're not following the plan that you set out as your goal, maybe they should say something. I mean, I, I in don't a know. nice way. <laughs> I gotta say, if my if my fiance were to smack a cupcake out of my hand, I'd hit him over the head with a frying pan. Now, if like you called yeah. me out or Jill or somebody called me out, I'd be like, okay, girl, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I, yeah. It's totally different from every, for everyone, but like, I mean, some people don't really care and they're just like, just tell me, but a lot of people are just like, nope, hard no on that one. <laughs> um, so tip number three, obviously you guys are planning your meals or should be. And that, um, is actually going to give you the power if you are the primary shopper. Uh, just don't buy the junk at the store. Just don't do it. If you're the primary shopper and you're the primary cook, you can have them go separately. 99% of the time, they will not make an extra trip to go to the store for themselves for ice cream, guaranteed. They don't want to get off their butt to do it. So I put it in their court. If they, if they want it, they have to go get it themselves. Um, and then something, one of my uh, challengers says that she tells her husband that he's not allowed to have snacks and stuff that he likes to enjoy um, in the house. So she makes him take it to work. So any snacks, any goodies are only at his work for him to enjoy. Um, let's see. Number four is to plan your consistent workouts so that they are not during times when you should be spending quality time with your family. So I know a lot of us, we wake up before everybody wakes up in the morning, we work out, or we wait until everybody's in bed, we work out, um, or just whenever they're not home. Um, just remember that it, that is something that's your time to dedicate to yourself. Um, so if you can do it, maybe if you have a garage or a spare bedroom so that your focus solely is on that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, number five is get a partner. If you don't have a success partner, you need to find one right now. There's Missy. She's waving. She's waving at me. <laughs> um, I can't stress enough to have a success partner, not only because you are able to 
share your struggles, your frustrations. Um, they will help keep you honest, like Vicki said, if your spouse does not. <laughs> um, they will encourage you when you're down, but they'll also celebrate your victories when you get them every single time. Um, uh, lean into your challenge groups every single day. You should be posting in, well, you should, everybody should always have a challenge group that they're posting in every single day. And if you have troubles with your nutrition, you need to post that too. It'll keep you accountable. Um, let's see. I hear my baby. She's crying. Something happened. <laughs> Let's see. Let's, my last one is honor your commitments to yourself, but don't spare your healthy relationship. So like no one should be arguing or fighting over what workout, what time you're going to work out or what you're eating. Um, let's see. Learn or lean into personal development. You should always be reading something that is appropriate for the struggle that you're having. You shouldn't just be reading to read. Um, compromise is a really big thing. It goes a long way, along with communication and patience. Patience is everything. Um, and I wrote down too, maybe offer personal development to them for whatever they're struggling with. Um, and I have, I've had clients in the past who have said, you know, my husband's not going to read anything or my wife's not going to read a book. Well, put it on in the car when you guys are driving. You're in charge of the radio if you're driving. They can't really turn it off, can they? I mean, they can, but that's kind of rude. <laughs> um, so that's kind of all the tips that I have for your healthy journey itself, but the same concepts can be held or can be used for your business as well. Um, so when it comes to your power hours, maybe explain to them what you're doing during your power hour, because essentially to them, it just looks like you are on the phone 24 hours a day, which you shouldn't be anyway. But to them, they might feel that that's what's happening. You're paying attention to everyone else except for them. Um, so maybe try, like I, me personally, I will only do my power hours, uh, before someone wakes up in the morning, uh, or after they go to bed or just when Jeremy is not home. So I make it a point to never be on my phone really, unless I'm taking a picture of something or checking a text message when it's not during, or when it's during family time, you know? Um, I also put down, which Vicki has told everybody before, business hours. Always have business hours for yourself. <laughs> um, for a long time, I struggled with that. And when I first started my business, Jeremy was not as supportive because it did look like I was on my phone all the time. Because you want to know why? I was on my phone all the time. Cause I always thought, Oh, well, I know this person wanted to sign up for a challenge pack. So I'll just send them the link really fast. It can wait. It can always wait. Um, let's see. I lost my page. Oh, um, so what, another thing that you might want to do that I've done too is show them what your challenge group looks like show them the timeline of everybody posting every single day, what they say about themselves when they post non-scale victories, you know, when they are, are posting that they feel confidence, they feel better about themselves because it might be what gets it to click for them of what you're doing. You know what I mean? Um, how you're spending your time and how you're helping other people if they don't already understand. Cause a lot of, spouses, they really don't know what we do all day. They don't know what consists of 
messaging people back, talking to them about their struggles or anything like that. Um, I've also shown any positive message, any positive private message that I have gotten from a client. Uh, so I have, let's see, three women right now who are pregnant, who are my clients that have tried for years to get pregnant, years upon years. And it wasn't until they used beach, beach body products and were consistent with their journeys to that they become pregnant. So that was like a huge thing um, for me to share with him. So, um, let's see. Another struggle um, is they might not know, well, they obviously don't know what we do in a power hour, but they might not also understand why you need this book or that book or this seminar or why you need to go to Super Saturday, why Success Club is important, um, why rank advancement is important for you, why your team members are important or important, like the community, the support, everything. Um, so I just think communication is probably what is going to help you the most. The more that you're open about what your why is, it's going to help them along the way. Um, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. So I wrote a couple other like snippets down that I saw um, online and in a couple books. Um, so the first one is people don't go into business for themselves on a whim. They just don't. They don't just do it just because they think it sounds fun. They do it because they have faith in themselves. They have passion for it. And they walked to the edge and they jumped and they decided to take ownership of their financial future. Um, entrepreneurs are huge risk takers. You know, 99% of the world, they, they can't be entrepreneurs. They don't want to because they don't want to put in the, the hard work. Um, they understand what a nine to five is. They understand serving the man and complacency and working to old age for someone else's retirement, which sounds terrible. Why would you want to do that? No, um, but that's not you. That's not why you guys are here. That's not why you guys are on the call. That's not why you show up every Tuesday, if you do. <laughs> um, and lastly, I think that sometimes only profit will help them understand your business. So run your business like a business every single day. Be consistent. Do all the things. You're not going to want to do all the things. You do the things anyway because that's the only way you're going to be successful with it. Um, yeah. Just stay true to you. The relationship with yourself is literally the most important one. Above. I love that. I love you so much. You're amazing. And you did fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah. So I want to touch on a few things if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, but she, you know, communication is key and Katrina touched on it. You'll read it in every personal development, listen to any podcast. Communication is yeah. key. And you, you guys, for some of you that don't know, I was married before I was married when I became a beach body coach and uh, just like Katrina said at the beginning of this call, they have a lot of insecurities. They see someone that they're with and mm -hmm. they see them growing and yeah. they may not feel threatened when you first got together. Maybe there was absolutely zero insecurities, but they see you losing weight or getting healthy or stronger or fitter. Right. And then they immediately look internally into them and they're like, what am I not doing? I'm not good enough for said person, mm -hmm. which that's not why we, we decide to get better. We decide right. to get better, to get healthier, to get fitter, to get stronger, to love ourselves so we can give our best selves to those we love, yeah. which they are them. But 
the thing is we can't help anyone else start their journey. Yes, we're out there inviting every day. Yes, we're out there like empowering and encouraging our challengers and stuff. But with our friends, with our family, with our significant others, we cannot push them to do something that they're not ready for. And sometimes they're not ready to jump when you're jumping, Mm -hmm. but communication is what's going to help in that situation. And they're not going to, they're not going to understand. Like Katrina said, they're not going to understand why you're on your phone all day. Why are you on Facebook all day? Why are you taking all these (laughs) damn selfies and posting spandex photos? Why are you doing that? I don't understand. And you got to explain it to them. And sometimes they're going to understand that sometimes they're not, you know, because unless you're in the trenches, you really, you really don't get it. Like, you know, no matter what someone is doing, like if you have a nine to five retail job and you try telling someone what it is that you do, they're not really going to understand, right? Unless they've been in the trenches with you. Same thing with beach body coaching. Like we could tell all day long about our challenge groups and our coaches and what we do on our team calls and how we communicate with our people. And, you know, when we get on Marcos and we get on, you know, Snapchat or whatever, and no matter how good we are at explaining, they're still may not understand completely. But when you sit there and you tell them your goals, and you include them too, Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge success because they'll understand like, oh, you you mean I'm a part of where you want to go. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like if you ask for their help, you know what, you ask for their support, they become a part of that success later on when you get there. It wasn't just you. Right. You know, you included them. Right. Absolutely. You know, and like, I, when you when you said that quote, people don't go into business for themselves on a whim. I thought you were going to go somewhere else, but like I love what you touched on with that. But the thing is, <laughs> like, I, well, I thought you were going to say people don't come into business for themselves or by themselves for themselves. Like, yes, we all want to be a better version of ourselves. Yes, we want to be financially free. Yes, we want to have all this freedom. We want this, but we don't just want it for ourselves. You yeah. know, we we want to share it with other people. Whether you're in a relationship whether you're a mom, whether you have no kids and you're doing this right now by yourself, either way, you're going to want to share it with someone in the future. So yeah. we are not beach body coaches just for ourselves. Right. And I think a lot of times we get portrayed as that way. I mean, most of everybody who has a family that I have come across and ask what their why was, it's always their family. It is Absolutely. never themselves. Never. Yep. I mean, the success for them will come, but it's for their family. Right. Right. And, you know, like, this is a really tough topic. Like I've seen, you know, when Katrina was talking, a lot of people were saying like, this is me, this is me, this is what I'm going through. And I've talked to a lot of coaches on our team and my personal sponsor coaches about how they're struggling with, you know, a relationship or someone that's not supportive or someone that doesn't get it. And, you know, Unfortunately, I get it. I've been there a few times, man. (laughs) But (laughs) unfortunately, you know, it's not always going to, you know, you're not, no matter what, we're not always going to be able to change someone. Yeah. But the thing is, whether or not you have a supportive spouse, lean in on your family. That's right here. Mm -hmm. Because, like, she, she talked about success partner, your upline me, anybody on this call, we are all like, I was going to say sisters, but we got a Mista (laughs) up in here. So we're sisters and a brother. Um, Just lean in, you know, everyone is here to love and support and encourage and empower each other. A lot of us know what it's like not to get support and what it's like to, you know, feel down and low and alone. You know, Mm -hmm. we've all been there. So don't think that you're alone and get you know, offer or ask for help, ask for advice, because like Terry said, it's a pride thing. We have like, it's not just a man thing. A lot of women have a hard time asking for help too. I, I do it. I'm sure a lot of people of here on here do it too. But the thing is you guys, that's a part of the wall that we have to break down for each other. Because if we don't ask for help, we're never going to get the help we need. Yeah. Well, and too, like, if you think about it, so everybody here is a coach of Vicky's. Did everybody say yes the first time Vicky asked them if they wanted to join a group? Danny's like, no, I turned her down for two years. 
<laughs> but if she had antagonized you into wanting to start your healthy journey, you would have been doing it for her. You wouldn't have been doing it for yourself and you would have failed already. So, I mean, even if they're not ready when you're ready, it doesn't mean that they're just not going to be ready altogether. Absolutely. It's just going to be at a different time than you. Right. So. Right. Otherwise, we'd all have signed up the day that I signed up <laughs> as a coach. and Or you could just go to Vicky on your own time and she never invited you to a challenge group and you just asked to join. <laughs> Or That's you could be me. like Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, can I come into your challenge group and be your coach? That would be great. Thanks. You know what? <laughs> I had to have at least one of you guys. Jeez. Hey, I think you have more than one. Oh, yeah. Victoria Potts <laughs> asked me too. Damn it. Okay, you guys are making me look bad. Not enough. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, I haven't, I just opened the chat, so I don't know. If There's coming. a lot of chats going on. Um, let me see if I could find any. Oh, Fawn asked a question. Let me see if I could find her question. She works out in an apartment um, and she struggles with finding a place to work out on the second floor. I suggest working out. You know, here's the thing. I, when I moved in with my fiance, he lived in a, a two-story condo and the living room was on the second floor. I just moved this stuff away and I tried my best not to be all like poundy poundy on the floor. I don't do a lot of plyometric moves anyways, but I would do a workout where one, there's not a lot of jumping. So don't do like T25 or insanity or asylum or anything like that. Um, and you could just move the furniture in your living room. Yeah. Half the time the workout, unless you're a grunter or something, you're, <laughs> you're not going to be loud when you're working out. So you can do it before anyone's awake. Um, if you are a grunter, then... If you're a Richardson, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a grunter in a sweater, just stop. Just stop right there. <laughs> I actually do my workouts a lot of times here in my apartment, and I live on the third floor. Um, I just literally went downstairs and asked the people below me, is this a problem for you? Oh, that's awesome. Um, because I did it one morning without even thinking. I'm like, hmm, there's people yeah. below me. Yeah. And I was actually doing T25. Oh, and uh, so so I went down and asked them, and they're like, "No, it's not a problem." And I was like, "Okay, clever." <laughs> That's awesome. And then they're gonna be like, "Okay." Then they're gonna see. You know what? That might just be their excuse anyway. They might just say, Meh, "Sorry, I still don't have enough room," because that's just where they're at. Right. You know, they're, they're not the thing about it to is let go of that excuse to get somewhere further. Where we'll there's a it. will, there's we'll a way. Yeah. Yeah. Or just ask them what time they're at work so they're not home when you're jumping around. <laughs> yes. Or you can do that too. <laughs> or you can ask them to join you. Hey, do you want to plug into Beachbody On Demand at 6 o'clock in the morning? You have a week? new customer. <laughs> there you go. Boom. My, my neighbor's 70 years old. I don't think that's going to oh, happen. No, oh, mind. cute. He may benefit from Shakeology though, so you might want to get on and that. And there's Kai Chang. <laughs> I've seen 70-year-olds do yoga before. Hey, there, I will ask them. I, there's I'm not some 60 to. and 70 year olds in our test group. The coach test group. Oh, yeah. The obsession. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't rule them out. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else is on here. Um, oh, no, yeah, I do. I, three, three and a half years it took her husband. Yeah. Three and a half years. That's a long time. And he came around. But she never gave up. That's right. You don't have to. Um, Katrina, I have a question for you because a lot of coaches do struggle with anxiety. Do you have any personal development or podcast geared towards overcoming anxiety that has helped you at all? God. No. <laughs> okay. I literally like, so what I have to do for myself and I might be a little bit different, but I have to sit and like meditate for a little bit. I don't always post about it. It's just something that I do personally on my own time. And I just kind of keep to myself um, for like 10, 15 minutes. Um, I was on medication for a really, really long time, but I've been off of it for the last two years. And really me exercising every single day and eating better, it makes it so much easier, so much easier. It, you, like it's so where everybody's so quick to look for medication and stuff like that to you know quick fix a problem 
when a lot of times all we need to do is adjust the way that we eat and move our body in order to help internal things, you know, not just feeling better, but like your depression, your anxiety, any panic attacks, like that has its way of working itself out, you know, naturally for you. So you might want to look into maybe taking some things out of your diet that might be contributing to that too. Because I know like some for people when they eat gluten, they might not have physical sensitivities to it, but it might make them more high strung and more prone to anxiety. So Same with caffeine and alcohol too. Right. Yeah. So like, please don't use the energize. I mean, I do anyway, but I mean, I'm okay with it, but, yeah. <laughs> but don't no, do I've what really, I do. I've never really looked up any, you know, personal development for it. Um, my anxiety mostly with my business is invites just like everyone else to which, you know, they have books for that, you know, right. eat, eat, eat the frog, you know, what, what are other ones? Um, get over your damn self. That's yep. one. Um, I'm having a brain fire. Oh, here, here, if you guys, um, I know I, I, this has nothing to do with anxiety, but when you're talking about inviting, um, I know I talked about this book probably six months ago. It's called Magnetic Sponsoring. I never heard you bring that. Maybe you weren't on the team call then. Hey, I was on it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Look at Missy. She's like, woo. But this is a really good book when it comes to, um, working less hard and attracting more people like based on how you present yourself on social media. And I, I know that has zero to do with what Katrina was just talking about. <laughs> but she, we were talking I, like, about <laughs> I saw it on my bookshelf and I had, I had to, uh, it's called magnetic sponsoring by Mike Dillard. Mike Dillard. Oh, yeah. Everybody's reading that Wash Your Face book. That oh, yeah. I've seen that. Post. I don't know what it's about, though. I saw people posting about it, but I, I don't. I don't know what that struggle is geared or what the book's geared toward. What? And I just said that backwards. The struggle that the book is geared towards. There you have it. <laughs> um, Are, does anyone else have questions for Katrina that you want to unmute yourself and say, hey? Who, okay, so raise your hand if in the oh, wait, past. I think Jess, hold on. Jess, Jess is driving, but I think she raised her hand to say something. <laughs> <laughs> hold, please, hold, please. I'm going to unmute you. Okay, there you go. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, yes. so I also have some situational anxiety and just recently learned that I struggle from PTSD. Um. And I actually saw an acupuncturist for the first time yesterday who brought to my attention. I'm so nervous talking to you guys right now. I feel (laughs) stupid. (laughs) But um, like now you know how I feel. Like, (laughs) oh my God, Um, right? (laughs) Yeah. But the acupuncture guy taught or like told me to look up. It's called EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques. Yes, Andrea does that. So I, I like... Yes. So yep. I just, it. I haven't really even like delved into it yet, but it might be helpful. It's to most, you who also so struggle. like when I think of the tapping, it's like a form of meditation for yourself. It's right. pretty much identical to that, but you're saying to yourself affirmations while you are tapping and, right. you know, versus sitting there in silence, listening to your meditation saying out loud what they ask you to you're constantly with the tapping telling yourself affirmations yeah so give me a few weeks i'll actually be certified in it (laughs) oh cool (laughs) no yeah i know andrea does it every day eft emotional freedom techniques yeah there's tons of guided uh tapping techniques on youtube too that you guys can look at and check out like you can do tapping for anxiety, tapping for pain, tapping for stress, tapping for, for invites. Tapping <laughs> for invites. Yes. Must be really patient. <laughs> I watched Andrea do a tapping for invites before, and like the things that she was saying to herself during it, 
they make sense. We seriously overcomplicate things. Yeah. But like <laughs> this really like saying it out loud to yourself, it makes it sound silly. And then when you're, ta it, yeah, it just kind of pulls it all together for you. Just be so, yeah, I hope it helps. Well, like this. When you're doing the tapping for um, anxiety, depression, PTSD, those are really big ones. So give yourself love and appreciation because it's not going to be as instant as like tapping for inviting and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I just don't want anyone <laughs> you're to not like, just gonna be like, my mind has transformed. Well, we had a lot of people in the course that I dropped think. out because they like completely just gave up. And I'm like, it, keep going. Like, it's full of love. I promise. You just. Well, yeah, just like with anything else. Yeah. The more you Can you tap, tap for a six pack? <laughs> I have a six pack. I have a six pack. It's not there yet. As I'm eating donuts, I have a six pack. No? Vicky, that should be our next um, free group. <laughs> <laughs> tapping, tapping for donuts. Tapping for abs. <laughs> Plus donuts. Um, I want to say, I want to ask group for tapping. Oh, I don't what? Think so, right? What? No? Sorry. I was going to say. Me. Oh, I, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> No, I was going to say another thing too. I mean, this doesn't fix your anxiety um, or depression or anything, but like I've been struggling the past couple of days and I've been hiding and that's something I haven't really done in a long time. And so I was like, okay, you got to just share it because you don't want to share it. You got to share it. Now I'm not telling you that that's the best thing to do for everybody because you may, that may not be coming from a place that you're ready for or whatever you're dealing with. But for me, I was like, you know, if I feel like this, somebody else feels like this right now. And so I just basically just spoke up and said, you know, how I was feeling. I didn't go into too much, too much detail. I kept it short. It was probably like seven minutes, but I was just like, you know, for those who don't deal with this, like be more supportive of people who do saying like, rather than shake it off. And then those of you who are feeling this way, like reach out to people, just kind of giving them like giving myself a motivational speech, but like to other people, you know what I mean? And I got so much love and so many people just saying, Oh my God, I'm battling this too. And so it almost made me feel better because then in that moment when I was struggling and did feel alone, then I didn't feel alone. If that makes sense. So, it's yeah. really therapeutic. You know, like I think so many times we're afraid to share our transformation photos or we're afraid to talk about our struggles or something. But the thing of it is guys, like, we're always afraid of, like, I'm okay, I'm going to be blunt here. We're afraid of the assholes that troll social media and are mean, okay? There's going to be dicks in this world. They need PD and EFT up in their life. <laughs> Anyways, but the thing is, when we do have those moments of vulnerability and we do come out on social media and we share, no matter how hard or easy it is, there's something very therapeutic because there's these people that are watching you that may not like or comment on your stuff, but they're watching you every single day. And when you show up and you're vulnerable and you share a struggle that you're going through, they're there for you. Like they're your best friend. Like it's the craziest thing over the past six years I've met. I haven't actually met, but I have bonded these with these amazing women over similar struggles because I was brave enough to put myself out there and say, this is what I'm struggling with, or I'm really fatigued or hypothyroidism, this, or, you know, pity party that whatever, whatever I chose to rant about, you know? And the thing is, whenever we're in that dark place, whether it's anxiety, depression, uh, unsupported relationship, whatever, we always feel like we're alone. We always feel like we're the only ones going through that. But right. then we, we put ourselves out there and we see that that's not the case at all. And like I said, it's very hard to do that because we're so afraid of the naysayers and the jerks out there. But the thing is, there's so many more amazing, beautiful people out there than not that that's exactly why we should be putting those out there. Just yeah. like Dana said. Well, I mean, like when you're telling, like essentially how you should be posting every single day to your social media is if you were talking to the old you, because yeah. that's exactly who you are trying to get to come to you as a customer, because that's who you know how to help best. Right. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. You want to post something each day that you would have wanted to hear when you woke up in the morning and opened your phone. Yeah. 
Danny, I just read your comment. That person's <laughs> yeah, a drug Danny, addict. it's called confidence. You need to make a post about it. Yeah. Call, call that person out. Yeah, absolutely. Do it tomorrow. Or, or do like a lot of us do and post on the big team page and then you'll have a bunch of mama and papa bears on there now because we do come out full forces. I had the last time I had someone say something bad about me that like really hurt me to a core is I was, I don't know. I was like super, it was before I even gained back some of my weight, but I was super little and someone, this man said, I, you look pregnant. I don't even know why you're p posting your workout photos or whatever. And maybe I was a little bloated. Maybe I gluten. God, maybe I looked like looked at a flour tortilla. God knows what happened. <laughs> but my, you know, and I, tortillas. I was bending over doing Kyo and I posted in the group. Like I was literally crying because here I am working my ass off and some guy has the audacity to come on my page when he's not even my target market. So GTFO in the first place, but <laughs> I, I'm like literally crying and I post on the big team page and everyone, like, I'm not even kidding you. Like Cindy and Blair and Andrea, like everyone like attacked this guy. They were taking screenshots of his, <laughs> of his pictures and posting them in the thread. Like, I'm not saying that we need to stoop down to this level, but like, we, like everyone was pissed because they're like fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you, dude, you mess. You no, we have this community for a reason. Yeah, we have this support for a reason. We're here for a reason. Use it. <laughs> yeah. But it felt good. Like even people that were, even people that um weren't my friends in real life, like we're sticking up and like, mm -hmm. how dare you say that? And if you even followed her, you would see blah, blah, blah. I also had another, like an old, older lady say that my son, my poor son is going to be embarrassed when he gets older because his mom has tattoos. That really hurt too. <laughs> oh, that's just dumb. And then I went to my mom and my mom was like, oh no, she didn't. But yeah. <laughs> No, Danny, I think you should take that and turn it into a post for tomorrow. I agree. I absolutely agree. You should address the fact that someone tried to bring you down and it didn't work. Yep. Absolutely. It just didn't. All right. I love how where this has gone tonight. This is awesome. <laughs> Going all over the place. Right. Um, oh, she deleted the comment. But yeah, it doesn't matter if you delete the comment. Like, you could either choose. I would, to, it. I would have kept it and I would have commented. Yeah. I'm just yeah. Bold. I'm a mom crap. I just don't give a fuck like that. What'd you say, Dana? I said, yeah. I said, yeah, it's my mom crack. It's actually legal. Would you like some? <laughs> this is yeah. what keeps me functioning every day. Turn Would you like to do an invite? <laughs> no, we don't want that person over here. <laughs> no, you have to with Dana. us. You can have some energize, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does it, it for motivation. Oh yeah. Dude, try doing cardio flow with no energize today. I switched oh. over to the, the workout that Autumn says we could place the power something of 21 day fix extreme. It was still shitty. There were still mule <laughs> kicks. Like what, what is that? I thought I was getting away from that. Nope. Mm -mm. Doing cardio without energize. <laughs> no. No, fine. No, I am okay doing cardio without Energize. I am not doing, I'm not okay doing cardio flow without Energize. That is the most, the hardest workout I've ever done in my entire life. It's dumb. It's it makes dumb. me seriously doubt myself, like, major. <laughs> it gives okay. me anxiety. <laughs> no, it does. Like, uh, like. I halfway through it, I will like almost have a panic attack because I'm like, I don't think I can do this. It's tough. It's definitely tough. So I turn a, what, 45 minute workout into an hour and a half, <laughs> which is even worse. God, why do I do that to myself? Patrice, you're going to rock your third day. And I think the third day is cardio core, which is oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> that's actually my favorite cardio workout. It's awesome. You're just not going to like Saturdays for a while. Yeah. The power strength extreme wasn't any better. You're right, Danny. It wasn't any better. I guess <laughs> it was 30 minutes, but it was still like crab walks. And what's up with all these animals? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> Anyways, okay. No, well, if anyone doesn't have any more questions, we can stop the recording and we can let you all hop off and invite to the three-day sneak peek that starts tomorrow. 
I felt like a light was supposed to shine off my teeth. Ding! When I did that. <laughs> but it didn't happen. But thanks for watching the recording.